Good morning and welcome to the Pix Resources Limited Annual Results Investor Presentation. Throughout this recorded presentation, investors will be in listen-only mode. Questions are encouraged, can be submitted anytime by the Q&A tab situated in the right-hand corner of your screen. Just click Q&A, scroll to the bottom, type your question and press send. The company may not be in a position to answer every question received during the meeting itself. Have the company review all questions submitted today and publish responses where appropriate to do so. Before we begin, we'd like to submit the following poll. I'm going to run a short video ahead of the presentation. Now I'd like to hand you over to Oliver Hassler, CEO. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Paul. Good morning, everyone. I'm very happy to be here with you and be able to uh, show you the annual results or the results we had for the year 2022, which were a wonderful year for PIX, and also for those who are newly following us to give you uh, an overview of what we do. First of all, I will assume that everyone read the disclaimer. PIX Resources is a mineral sands mining company listed in the National Stock Exchange of Australia and also listed on the main market of the London Stock Exchange. We did our original IPO in Australia in February 2020 and we listed in London in November 2021. We're mineral sands mining companies for who, for those who are not experts, we mine for zircon and titanium oxide. Zircon is a mineral that's used mainly in very large industries such as the ceramic industry, the refractory industry, foundry and chemical industry, but also for high-tech applications 
such as semiconductors and, and batteries for electric vehicles. Titanium oxide is largely used for uh, pigmentation. We have a very two very large resources with the fourth largest assets uh, uh, based on resources with 10.5 million tons of zircon. We're the second largest one in production. We have been in production since 2015. Not only do we have a very large resource, we're also known for having a very high quality. Quality in terms of Kalimantan sands are known for the very high whiteness. We also have a low radioactivity, low alumina content, and low iron contact, which makes us ideal for the fused zirconia industry, which is mainly where you use zirconia, uh, zircon to produce zirconia for high-tech applications, such as I mentioned before, but also for nuclear power, for, for energy cells, uh, etc. We're also known for having a very high assemblage value. Most of the mineral sands mines in the world are ilmenite sands with byproducts of rutile and ilmenite. Our highest concentration is of zircon and our byproducts are ilmenite and rutile, which is important because zircon is by far the most expensive of these minerals. Our assemblage value is three to five times larger than the one of our peers, which gives us a natural high margin. Timing for our project could not be better. We are in Indonesia, which, uh, uh, as you all know, there's a trade war between Australia and China. Australia is the biggest producer of zircon. China is the biggest consumer. And Indonesia is a belt and uh, road country, so is the large, is large strategic ally of China. Also, there's a lack of supply. This was projected for many years. And since 2021, there's not enough supply for the market, which triggered very high price increases of over 100%. Uh, even now with the mineral and metal crash in June, prices continue uh, to increase. Most of the governments in the world have declared uh, both zircon and titanium oxide as a critical mineral required towards the transition in carbon zero. As you're going to see, we have worked since the beginning to increase our volumes. Last year, we showed a growth of 83% uh, of in our revenues, mainly driven by price increases and volume increases. And you'll see down the presentation that we operate in Indonesia at international standards, not only because of our sustainability program, but also how we set up the company in general. Strategi operationally and strategically, since the beginning, we had a very clear vision on how we would reach in a five-year plan uh, towards the production of 48,000 tons of zircon, which would convert us into the fifth largest producing zircon company in the world. Operationally, we have been focusing on increasing the volume, which we have done year after year, as you have followed us in the announcement. We're working on drastically decreasing our mining costs from changing from third party in-house miners to, uh, to our own in-house mining. Right now we're testing and we expect by the end of the year to be ready to do our in-house mining and entering next year with a drastic uh, cost reduction. We have also started with the production of our byproducts, Rutile and Ilmenite, which we started during the first half of last year, which we're stockpiling and we're waiting for the export uh, approval. Also, strategically, we, we have acquired a second mine, Tisma, which is not in production. We're the only industrial group in Kalimantan, in central Kalimantan. And I believe we can become the consolidator of the mineral sands mining business in the area. So we're continuously looking for new opportunities. On this next slide, you'll see the, the applications. I already mentioned the, the high volume industry where it's used. 60% of the zircon of the world is used in China, but the most, the fastest growing segment is the high tech segment, which is growing with uh, Kageris of about 30% per year. So it's still a segment of the zircon market that's less than 5%, but very fast uh, growing. So we have the, the traditional uses, 
which I mentioned, like uh, uh, which are issues like ceramics. We have the high tech usage, which are things like uh, solar cells. As far as the supply and demand, you'll see on the right side of this image, it was forecasted that there would be a lack of supply. This was delayed by one year because of COVID, but January 1st, when China came out of the crisis, it's, it's accelerated. We had price increases of over 100%. In December 2020, at, at 19, we were selling at prices of $1,300 per ton. In June, we were selling at 3,100. So there has been very high price increases. I've been very bullish about it. Even if you take all the new projects and assume that they will happen at the volumes they're being announced and then the timing they're being pronounced, there will not be enough to compensate for the bigger mines that are reaching the end of their mine life and are losing productivity. So the market expects this lack of supply to grow at a CAGR of 2.5 to 3%. So we'll continue to put pressure uh, on prices. Like I mentioned in June, when the big metal and mineral crash came, Zircon increased its prices into Q3. So not only did it not fall, but prices went up. They were stable during the third quarter last year and the fourth run. And the market just announced an increase going into Q2. Uh, Ilmenite and Rutile. So most of the ilmenite is used to produce synthetic rutile. We have both uh, in our mine, which is titanium oxide or titanium stock feed. 90% of it is used for the pigmentation industry. Then the next part would be for the production of welding rods and the rest also for high-tech uh, applications or the production of titanium for the airline or the, the aircraft industry. The same thing is happening here. It is part of the critical minerals and metals required by the world towards the, the tradition, transition towards carbon zero. And we can also see that the same trend as Zircon is happening. There's not enough supply for the growing demand. The Zircon industry is very much consolidated. 73% of the world's supply is in the hands of five main players. This adds a lot of discipline uh, to the market. It is a commodity. Prices go up and down. If you look at the chart on the bottom side of the slide, and even if you cut to the commodity super cycle in 2012, you could see that uh, prices have been fluctuating, but in a continuous growing uh, trend. And since the year 2020, have, have grown on the higher side of, of the extrapolation or the forecast from most of the companies. Today, Zircon prices are at 2,350. And, and all indications are that this will continue into the future. We just finished a very positive year. 2022 is the second full year that we are in operation since we funded the company with the IPO in February 2020. We had a very strong revenue uh, growth built on strong business fundamentals. Our revenue showed an increase of 83%, coming up to $23 million, up from 12 million a year before. Our premium zircon revenue had an increase of 81% ending up with an average zircon price of 2457 which is an increase of 36 percent compared to the average in 2021 our zircon sales grew by 33 uh, percent compared to the year before and we continue to have very robust customer demand yeah last year was also marked by us starting with the production of the byproducts, Rutile and Ilmenite. Here you can see our detailed profit and loss. 
I have mentioned most of the most important numbers, but we were very happy to have only in the second full year of operation already a positive underlying EBITDA of $419,000 coming from a negative 794 a year before. So it's, it's, it's very, it was a very good news for our group that in such a short period, we have been able to ramp up and be able to show a positive underlying EBITDA. And I lost my mouse here. If we look at the cash flow, we had a relatively, the operations consumed a relatively low amount of our cash flow of 2.5 million. We ended up the year with 7.2 million. So we're debt free since the beginning of the operation it is our intention to continue to do so we have enough cash on our balance sheet to grow organically our project at uh, at mandiri which is the way we projected in our five-year plan i would like to spend a little bit of time this, uh, talking about our deposits the first deposit is our mandiri deposit this is the one that's in operation that's our original deposit uh, our offices are in Palankaraya, which is the capital city of central Kalimantan. It was one of the candidate cities to become the new capital city of Indonesia. And as a result of that, we have a new international airports, we have hospitals, we have hotels, we have government paved road all the way to our mine and to the factory and back to the ports. We have deep sea ports, uh, which are today exporting not only our products but also high volume products such as iron ore iron and coal so as you can see our project is a low capex project because we do not have to invest in very high uh, capex lines which is usually uh, logistics so palankaraya is one and a half hours away from by air from jakarta our factory is 100 kilometers north from Palankaraya, which is about a two hour car ride. And the mine is 20 kilometers from there, which is another uh, half hour. As you can uh, see here, this is uh, the Mandiri tenement, as I mentioned, is a very large resource. We have 2,032 hectares, which uh, York inferred resources of 6.5. A million tons. It has been in production since 2015, but uh, we have really only uh, pushed to increase the production since the IPO in 2020. Here you can see our factory. The entire process from the mining to the factory is environmental friendly. We don't use chemicals. We have little overburden on the mine, reducing the, the extraction cost most of it is a gravitational process so we use trommel barrels spirals in the factory shaking tables dryers and then high uh, tension magnetic and static uh, separation we have worked to increase the capacity at the end of 2021 we increased the capacity of the mineral separation plant to 24,000 ton per year and our intention is to double the size of this in, within our uh, uh, five-year plan. So today, most of our CapEx focus is in the mine where we want to substitute, uh, substitute third-party uh, mining, uh, contract mining for our own mining, which will allow us to drastically uh, reduce the cost. We're right now in the final stages of, of the testing unit. Once we're happy, with the results, we will then bring the entire uh, mineral field unit up to scale, which we expect to happen by the end of the year. So we will continue to increase the volume and then drastically reduce the costs. We, the, as far as the export license for Rutile and Ilmenite, the authorities in Indonesia, the mining authorities, have authorized the export of titanium oxide and we're just waiting for the license from the trade 
department. So in the meantime, we're stockpiling it. We ended up the year with 7,000 tons of root tile that if we consider today uh, price in the Chinese market or in the international market of $350 per ton gives us an upside potential of around $2.5 million. Tisma is a mine we acquired in February 2021. It's also a very high grade zircon mine. It's 1,500 hectares of land with 4.5 million tons of zircon inferred uh, resources. It has a concentration of 3.3% of zircon. So here you can see, this is a very important slide. You can see the zircon concentration on the X-ax compared to the titanium oxide concentration on the Y. You can see that we're an outlayer compared to the other publicly uh, traded companies. Mandiri has a concentration of 4.8% of zircon and Tisma of 3.3, compared to most of the mines in the world that have around 1%. And why is this important? Because zircon is much more expensive as a mineral than ilminite and ruta. So we have more of the expensive mineral, which gives us a natural margin. As far as our consumers are concerned, all of our exports are done in US dollars. We don't take any, uh, neither credit risk nor exchange risk. We have customers, we have made sure to diversify in the different regions of the world and also in the different industries. So over the last years where our order book has always been equal to our capacity. So the only inventory we usually have in the factory is the one we need to prepare for the next order. When Europe and the Americas was low because of COVID in 21, we exported most of our sales into China. When China slowed down in the second half of 2022, we moved back to Europe and Americas. So we have now a large enough customer base to uh, feel safe to be able to fulfill our growth plan to 48,000 tons per annum. We also have inventory in two main ports in China. And recently in last year, we started with inventory in Malaysia and Port Klang, which is an important logistical hub, which allows us to reduce the costs into India, Europe, and the Americas, and also have a better productivity and with that in uh, del service in delivery. As I mentioned, we're based in central Kalimantan, Indonesia. We're, we feel very well in Indonesia in the sense that it's a very high quality zircon. We have a low cost uh, labor, but a low cost labor with an expertise in mining. Indonesia has been growing as a mining country. They have been changing their regulations over time to make sure to attract foreign invest investments. The biggest change they did was to change from the contract of work to IUP uh, licenses with very stable environment compared to other developing countries. So also, also we know well the local authorities. We know well the mining authorities in, in Jakarta. We have shown that not only by being able to fully license both of our Tenements. We have also relicensed them. Two years ago, we relicensed Mandiri. In February this year, we announced that we have relicensed Tisma for another 10 years. On our board of directors since last uh, year, we have Dr. Suhia, who used to be mining, uh, managing director in the coal and mining department of Indonesia, a well known geologist that forms now part of our board of directors. Since the beginning, sustainability was a very important base on which we grew. We created a program called PIX Cares, where we focus on planet, people, prosperity, peace, and partnership. We have made sure uh, on, on August last year, we joined the United Nations Global Compact Initiative. We November 1st, we uh, issued our first sustainability uh, report and we want to make sure that we're 
treating our people and and interacting with the local communities at international uh, standards. We also went through a Smeta audit, which makes sure to audit the company, a third party auditing of our company to make sure that on the human resources side, on the health, the safety, the environment and the social side, uh, we are uh, working on not only Indonesian regulations, but also international standards. So as you can see from the presentation, we have a very high quality product, which is in high demand. Operation wise, we are growing the volume. We have a very strong project to drastically reduce the cost and we have additional projects, uh, products which we will put into the market. We still have many upsides as far as we can increase the exploration of our actual tenements and with that increasing the assets, we can also go uh, deeper. We have a strong sustainability base. We have customers around the world diversifying and, and, diverse, and a very diversified by industry. We have also improved our logistical solutions by having warehouses in China and uh, Malaysia. We're very happy with this uh, listing we did in London, which has allowed us to diversify our shareholding and to increase our liquidity. Very important is we have a very strong bullish zircon price uh, outlook. So based on this, I think we have a very, we have created a company with a very high upside for our shareholders. What you ex should expect from us during 2023 is we will continue to show an increase in our production towards our goal to reach 48,000 tons. We will continue to show operational improvements, increasing our efficiencies, working on a decrease of cost, mainly on the mining side. We expect to sell our inventories and then continue to production and sales of our uh, titanium dioxide, continue with our diversified customer base, and to, to continue to make sure that we have open to enough new customers to be ready for the future demand. Paul, with this, I end up the presentation. I'm happy to answer questions from the floor. Fantastic, Oliver. Thank you very much indeed for the presentation. So, Oliver said, um, please do continue to submit your questions using the Q&A tab situated on the right-hand corner of the screen. So, right, Oliver takes a few moments to review those questions submitted today. I'd like to remind you the recording of the presentation, along with a copy of the slides and the published Q&A, can be accessed via your investor dashboard. Oliver, we did receive a number of pre-submitted questions from investors, and perhaps I could start with those. Um, the yeah. first one you have covered off there, there is a little end piece to it, but the first question reads as follows. You say you have a significant stockpile of ilmenite and Rutile ready for export when you receive the export license. Please could you tell us what's the average price of these materials? As you've previously said, this is a significant piece of cash ready to generate once export was granted and you mentioned the value of that, but do you have um, buyers ready for this and is it easy to sell once approval is given? Under today's circumstances, it's very easy to sell. We have several buyers lined up both in India and in China. So assuming that the market price remains where it is at $350 per tonne, and I and I believe there's an upside, but today would represent $2.5 million in cash and in profit because we have absorbed all the cost within the zircon production. Fantastic, thank you. Next question we've got here is, I appreciate that Tisma is currently being left alone due to finances and focusing on um, Mandiri. However, could you give shareholders an idea or a guesstimate about how much it would cost to bring online if you choose to do so? So if we were potentially going to do um, first, we are focusing on Mandiri because we have the cash to grow organically. Now the market would tell us that we should accelerate the project, but we have decided it's smarter to be care uh, to take care of our cash and, and, and to focus on what we have. So today we will continue to grow with Mandiri, but if we were going to start Tisma, it's probably a project to bring us up to 24,000 tons of, $15 million. We just have to repeat exactly the same thing we did with Tisma, with the difference of going directly into in-house mining. 
So there's two ways of approaching this. Either we wait until we have grown our volumes in Mandiri and we generate enough cash organically and then we invest in Tisma, or if we decide and the board decides to do so, we could uh, look for the right investors to, to accelerate this project. That's great, thank you. Um, in previous presentations, you talked to us about the Kalimantan region and over time you'd like to consolidate it. Can you give an idea of how many mines are in the region and what's the inferred or potential resource base in that region? And there's hundreds of mines and we will have, I mean, before we look at a, at, at a mine to seriously integrate it, we, we would have to do drilling and the York report. So I cannot answer for the uh, resources or the inferred resources in general in, in Kalimantan. But it is a region that has been known. It's not a surprise. I mean, the Chinese have mined there for alluvial uh, diamonds and gold for the last 2,000 uh, years. There's in the eastern part of the island, there's a lot of uh, nickel and iron. And in general, there's coal. There is uh, other zircon, but more uh, uh, artisan and bases coming out of, of Kalimantan. And we're the only industrial group. So we're constantly looking and exploring mine by one mine. We have to do our own drilling. Uh, in order to decide if we if we want to proceed in making an acquisition. But I believe today that we have a very strong case over time to get, if we get the right minds on board, to, to become a big consolidator and with that one of the largest assets of Zircon in the world. Thank you very much indeed. Um, please can you give us as much detail as possible as to when shareholders should expect to see the complete in-housing of the processing of materials. Obviously, this will massively reduce your costs and boost your profits, which would be a good signal to the market. And when this is completed, will you make an official announcement to the market, letting everybody know, including your shareholders? Uh, right now, we're finishing, as you could saw from the video, we have a full process. So we have trommel barrels, we have jigs, we have spirals and magnetic uh, separators in our tenement. So we're just testing it to make sure it's the right material. Uh, as far as the equipment is concerned, uh, we should be able to finish that over the next couple of months. And then we would place the order to bring that up to scale. So I expect us to have uh, to be ready for our own in-house mining by the end of the year and start the new year with a much better cost basis. And obviously, yes, we have been very transparent with the market on what we do. This is important major news so yes we would announce it to the market and most important the market would see it in our results super thank you can you discuss with us your capex projects for the current year and the year ahead this year based on what i just said the most important capex is in-house mining so that's where we're going to focus uh, all of our uh, resources the factory is already at 24,000 tons so we don't have to do any major investments the only investment we're doing in the factory is connecting it to the electrical grid which will allow us to drastically reduce our uh, electrical uh, costs and the rest of our efforts will be on our in-house mining that's great and one that has and that has been covered off in the presentation, probably worth reiterating. Are you able to iterate what your production guidance targets are for this year? And can you quote what publicly available information there is for shareholders who haven't seen this or aren't aware? I mean, our five-year plan from the beginning is to reach 48,000 uh, tons. We have been increasing the production into that direction uh, year after year. So we should be, we're on track of our project. So I still believe we will reach after five years with the problems we have had of, of, of mainly COVID, which made us lose some times, but uh, the teams have been able to make up and we should be able to reach our goal of generating 48,000 tons, which, which generates a, a wonderful EBITDA. That's good to hear. Right, that's covered off those pre-submitted questions there, Oliver. If you could just click on the Q&A tab, we have had a number of questions come through and we're appropriate to do so. Could I just ask you just to read out the question, give you a response and I'll pick up from you at the end. Thank you. Okay. How do energy costs affect us? Uh, obviously, we have they have affected us in the sense that that they, they have been going up, but it's not the biggest part of our production costs. So uh, the only what the only inflation we have had have been in the in the purchase of of diesel. We will be switching to the electrical grid, which will allow us uh, to compensate, but it's not a drastically impact on our project in general. 
and it has been largely compensated uh, by the production increase. What is the estimated resource life at the Mandiri currently at full production when you do aim achieving final full production? I mean, the, the life based on the actual resources we have for our project at 48,000 tons, this is 200 year mine life. So uh, we have a very, very large uh, mining project which opportunities to accelerate. What else do we have? What is the spare part inventory like at the moment? That's a little bit more detail that, I mean, at the end, what we do is every time we import equipment, we have a policy of importing it together with a spare part inventory of one to two years on imported equipment. For the rest, such as pumps and generators, etc., we either get it locally in Palankaraya or Banjarmasin. Banjarmasin is in Palankaraya, are major cities. Worst case scenario is that we have to bring it from Jakarta. That, that logistically, uh, when it's not an emergency, it takes us two weeks to get. But if it's an emergency, we could get it within uh, 48 hours. So at the end, we are in the middle of central Kalimantan, but we're not far away from civilization. Major cities are only three hours away in Kalimantan, and the capital city is one and a half hours away uh, by plane. What is the cyclone and hurricane season in Kalimantan? How often do you high category storms hit and terrain proponent flooding? Yes, uh, that's a good question. I don't think I've ever received that. And uh, we have 10 months of rain. We are around the equator, just south of the equator. So we receive a lot of uh, rain. There is flooding in the area. Until now, we have never had damage. The worst flooding we had, which was a first major scenario, was if I remember right, in November 2020, which didn't really affect the factory and, and the mining uh, as far as creating damage on the equipment, but it did affect the roads. So we lost uh, two weeks as far as shipping. So we continued to increase the inventory and, and we had to ship late. So we're used to having flooding. We have had uh, flooding both in Palankaraya and on the tenement. Usually it brings us a logistical interruption but until now it has not bring, brought big interruptions uh, to the process. So, so I don't expect, in general we'll be, we have to be used to that. And, and uh, I don't, I cannot imagine even a worst case scenario could create us a problem in a generator or perhaps make us lose a roof or so, but it should not be interrupting really or create se severe damage to our operation. Do we have any offtake or sell into spot marking? How long is cash collection? So at this moment in time, we started with offtake agreements. We have now worked more on spot markets. We sell mainly outside of China at international prices. We sell at prices that are around the tier one large producers in the world. So we do quarterly agreements with them at the international prices. And into the Chinese market, we sell at spot prices. Again, spot markets is usually higher when price pressure is going up. It's lower when price pressure is going down. And I foresee in, in, in the next long term to continue with this up pressure. But that's mainly spot market for the Chinese market. All of our other uh, customers are usually on a quarterly uh, basis. We receive most of the cash in advance. And, and if we work on a CIF basis, we do 50% down payment and the rest against documents, which is two weeks uh, later. And as you see, and everything is done in US dollars. Where do we see the cost of production? I mean, at the end, we expect the cost of production to, to drastically reduce to around $350 per ton, which is in line what our peer miners would be doing with uh, African costs. So we should be able to reduce them by over 60%. The 
And I guess with that, Paul, we finish our questions. I think Unless there's any other questions which I'm happy to, to answer. I think we have covered those off. And um, of course, the company will review any further questions that come in and we'll publish responses where appropriate to do so. Oliver, just before redirecting investors to provide you with their feedback, which I know is particularly important to you, can I just ask you just for a few closing comments, please? Sure. Thank you very much for taking the time and having the interest into our company. I think timing, as I mentioned at the beginning, could not be better. There is not enough supply for the actual demand. The world knows that the new supply of zircon will come in Indonesia. And we were the first uh, industrial group within mining for mineral sands in Indonesia. So I'm very bullish about uh, the future. And the reason I participated in this event is I'm looking to diversify our shareholding now that we have listed in the London Stock Exchange. And I'm very happy to answer any other questions you might have in the presentations. You see that we have an email under I, uh, IR at pixresources.com. And I'm happy to take uh, any other questions in the future from investors. Fantastic. Thank you indeed, Oliver, for updating investors today. Can I please ask investors not to close the session to be automatically redirected to provide your feedback? In order that the management team can better understand your views and expectations, this will only take a few moments to complete and those greatly valued by the company. On behalf of the management team of Pix Resources Limited, I'd like to thank you for attending today's presentation and good morning to you all. Have a good day. Bye.